this video, I'm going to be covering how to hire a supply chain logistics agent. This is one of the key roles that you will need to be hiring pretty quickly. Because if you don't, then that means that you're actually going to be spending quite a bit of your time just maintaining your business. This means that you're going to be doing a lot of shipment uh, labels, order handling the shippings with the suppliers or freight forwarders, and uh, the more volume you're going to be doing, then that just means that the more you are, the more of your time you're going to be spending doing this. Eventually, when you are selling many different products in many different marketplaces, then it means that, wow, it's actually going to be consuming a lot of your time. And especially during some very busy season like the fourth quarter. So this is a role that you need to be hiring pretty quickly as your volume increases, as your sales increase. So let's look into what actually you, go, you are going to be needing for a person that is fulfilling this role. If you are sourcing from China and all your suppliers are in China, then ideally you want this person to be Chinese because this person is going to be dealing with uh, mainly Chinese people and it helps you to have someone uh, that speaks Chinese in your team. Absolutely. So. It's not really a must thing to have, especially in the beginning, but eventually you should have someone, uh, some people in uh, that can speak Chinese. So let's look at all the different steps that need, be, need to be done. So there are seven specific steps and these are very similar to what when you are hi for hiring a virtual assistant, but the main difference are that are role specific meaning that the requirements, the actual job add, and then the different exams and different kinds of evaluations that the person needs to do. Step one is creating the job description. So we are giving you a template that you can use. You don't just, well, it depends what kind of requirements you would have, but you don't necessarily, necessarily need to change anything on it. So you can basically use it as such. And step two is then posting this job ad in different kinds of platforms. Then step three is sourcing an initial screening for the candidates that you have. Step four is testing the candidates with different kinds of uh, evaluations and exams. Step five is that uh, interviewing the candidates. And here is uh, actually a crucial thing. You don't want to be doing this uh, any kind of interviews with people too soon in the process because that means that you are, you will you need to give your time and you don't want to give your time to those people that are not really strong candidates. So that's why you need to have these evaluations and exams in place in order to get rid of the weed, so to say, meaning that you only get the best possible candidates that are good match for the job. So uh, after this interview comes this reference checking of these candidates, which means that you're going to be checking up on the previous employers. And then final step is actually selecting the talent for the hire. So you have X amount of candidates, then you just are going to be choosing the person that uh, match the fit uh, match, matches the role best. So here we have the job description for the supply agent. You can call it uh, whatever whatever you want. So you can change the role name. But it basically means just sub supply chain manager. And this role is responsible for managing the product inventory, dealing with suppliers and manufacturers, and ensuring good product quality. 
So this role also monitors orders, organizes product shipping and addresses the custom issues. So basically getting the stuff from most likely from China to different places, different warehouses on Amazon, mainly in US. And the different kind of accountabilities that we have here is that, first of all, analyzing the Amazon sales and maintaining the data sheet for orders and product inventory and forecast. So this means that this role has to take the responsibility in uh, doing those different kind of forecasts. Of course, there's many different tools that help the role to do this. For example, in Seller Central, there's also this uh, uh, Amazon coach that gives you estimates that when is the time that you need to reorder and when is the time that you actually need to ship those goods to Amazon so that you do not run out of stock. This person needs to have the cap capability to optimize the store uh, the inventory levels, meaning that you do not have too much stock so that in you you avoid long term storage fees, but you are also not getting out of stock because if you run out of stock, then that's going to be hurting your rankings on Amazon. And this role has to understand that quality is number one thing. It's very uh, common in China that people might actually cut corners and if you have too aggressive uh, negotiator on this uh, role it might actually end up hurting you this person will try for the best prices the lowest prices but that might actually end up causing low quality and if you get low quality then you will end up with one star reviews and if you end up with one star reviews then you do not have sustainable business on Amazon because Amazon is going to be sorting your listings. So other uh, accountabilities include coordinating with finance and accounting on reorder units and budget. So this means that, uh, well basically if you don't have any finance person it means that uh, you are basically doing those budgets and then this role will follow the budgets that you give. Meaning that you need to, you need to set some kind of uh, budget so that the person do, doesn't overdo with all the orders and so on. So this means that also that guaranteeing the availability of stocks for sale on Amazon and placing new orders to suppliers based on their latest average sales and what's it. So you, this person, I mean, you need to give the responsibility and accountability for this role. It doesn't mean that uh, she's going to be asking or from you or anyone else that okay how much should I order that's the last kind of person that you want to have in this role because otherwise that person is always going to be dependent on you or somebody else and it's not a self-organizing role or team therefore so uh, the role accountabilities also include ne negotiating better prices with suppliers and manufacturers and Keeping different kinds of this includes keeping different kinds of seats updated and ensuring that you have all the invoices and so on because you need those invoices to your bookkeeping and, and you also need to submit those to Amazon in case uh, in case Amazon asks, for example, in different kind of copyright infringement cases. I suggest you to take things to a really professional level from the very beginning. So this means that you also do uh, contracts with the vendors and so this person is also re responsible in making sure that everything is up, up to date and also that everything is uh, properly documented. This role also is going to be a, a, arranging all the different kind of product inspections and making sure they, those are carried out and also making sure that the product in specs and company is doing a good job meaning that they are actually inspecting what they say they are doing so taking really critical view of all the different kinds of reports there are and communicating with with the suppliers on these product issues and concerns that might come out of these inspection reports 
so the role has to be has to know uh, has to be able to read those uh, reports and has to be able to critically critically analyze those and really uh, push all, all not only the suppliers for good quality but also the uh, product inse inspection companies and whenever you have whenever you are working with a product inspection company they're going to be asking for the requirements are and for the things that they are going to be looking at in their inspection so this means different kind of product uh, details and uh, these depend on uh, dif these are different from uh, in different kinds of products meaning that on some uh, products you might test different kinds of features and but the basic things are that uh, that the package itself is uh, intact and the, all the labels for example in the in each product are good and so on next thing is doing the different kind of shipping plans in uh, seller central providing the shipping labels to suppliers and just making sure that the suppliers actually follow the requirements uh, given that amazon requires then another thing is that every organizing everything with the freight forwarders or directly with the suppliers depending on how you are actually shipping your product and also tracking the shipments and resolving related issues because it actually happens that there's issues in these kind of shipments so there needs to be one person that is i mean this person needs to follow up and push that things are actually progressing rest of the of these things are basically the like this kind of like administrative stuff for example these different inventory counts and uh, one thing is these dummy listings uh, as we have taught before that you always always need to create this product listing in seller central before you are paying for the orders because it might happen that Amazon does not give you the right to sell that product on Amazon and then if you have already paid for the shipment or, or for the products then that's going to be a pretty challenging to challenging problem to deal with one key thing always is that you only want people who are who who have this passion for continuous improvement are and are really hunger hungry for things to improve you don't want people who are who settle with things or are happy with how things are no you are always uh, you want to create this culture in your company of continuous improvement so this means that you look for people who are similar who already have this kind of mindset in them so that you don't need to like uh, teach or you don't need to push people towards this because it it's pretty most likely that it, it it, if, he, if people don't have it in them then it, they are not not they are not going to be having it them either so i mean no matter how hard you push them then it just doesn't help and another point is that, that hire people who are organized because if people are organized then it's much be easier to deal with them don't waste your time working or with sloppy people or unorganized people because they are only going to give you headache and nothing else so keep, keep this in mind that you only want organized people next thing is then actually posting the job ad and so here's a sample uh, job ad that you can use so it's just pretty basic thing that okay the person actually need, needs to have some kind of degree so bachelor's degree in supply chain management logistics be business administration or something similar then uh, actual experience on this field and using these different kinds of tools that we are and especially com comfortable with working from home so this means that the person needs to be needs to have good uh, equipment like uh, working space and so on but this pretty pretty much goes without saying 
next question probably is that where to find these uh, where to find these people and so so far we have been using online source for the finding people from the Philippines but this is actually a bit of special case that we want person who speaks Chinese so um, of course in in Philippines there's a big population of Chinese people and also Chinese speaking people uh, we have also have have hired people who are Chinese but living in the Philippines but most likely of course you can try find uh, these candidates from online shops .ph, but don't make it your only only option because it, this is not not really the best place to find uh, Chinese people another option is LinkedIn so we have found a lot of uh, good people from LinkedIn so it's definitely a good choice to post uh, a good uh, option to post your job at there and to see that if it gets any traction and also you it's good to actually find uh, I mean try searching for different kind of candidates to see that if you by chance happen to find some good candidates and this has happened to me that sometimes when I've just uh, mainly for fun because I mean it's mainly for our HR K2s doing those sourcing for candidates but sometimes if if I have a specific role in mind I'm also doing this uh, this um, searching for candidates in my spare time so I have found several different candidates from LinkedIn so that's a good option to keep in mind definitely when you're searching for people you can uh, a good keyboard keyword system to use is supply chain and then here you can see that on LinkedIn you can specify that you can search for people you're probably thinking that hey that's that, that cannot be it I mean there surely there are some Chinese job products as well and yes there are but the challenging thing is that some of those actually require you to have a Chinese company so this means a legal entity registered in China so some of the Chinese websites are 51job.com and jopin.com but better ways to find people are actually and this is the most common way we have used so far this is the way that we have used to, to find the best Chinese people we have and that was to ask the suppliers if they have anyone to refer to what we did is that we had uh, we asked our previous supplier sales manager to work for us and uh, th th this wasn't a supplier that we used anymore but we really loved working with her so we wanted to hire her but uh, she wasn't available at that time but then she was actually able to recommend us other candidates other really good candidates I mean she has actually referred many good people to us so this is a good really good source to find good candidates asking your suppliers and what you also might want to do is make create a post in WeChat and and then ask your supplier to share that post that way you will get more reads for the post and then you are able to utilize the network that your supplier has also another uh, website is Upwork I mean there are Chinese people there as well but you just need to do diligence meaning that you need to make sure that the candidate is good but I mean that's what you eventually need to do anyway so uh, at this point at this step 3 you're on, only so sourcing for these candidates so it doesn't really matter which uh, websites you use or which which methods to use because right now it's just creating this pool of candidates once you have the candidates then it's time to test them so send the candidates the link to the logistics quiz and also send the link to this uh, Tony Robbins disk assessment this uh, is a good way to get also kind of an idea about their personal personality what kind of person they are and how do they think and how do they work best because it's good to see that is it really a good fit to your culture 
and does it really have the uh, the personality that you are looking for in this specific role? Always, and I do mean always, hire hire for your culture. The person is either making your company culture better or worse. There is no middle ground. So this means that if the person is not having creating a positive impact and really living your values, then he or she is going to have a negative impact. Please keep this in mind when you are when you are evaluating people. Assess people against your company core values. So it's not only about their performance and how they're doing. Another, I mean, and this is at least 50% is that how good are they living your core values. You cannot really change people, so make sure that they are good fit already in this early stage because otherwise you, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a big problem for them to fulfill their core values and really have positive impact on your company. You want every person in the company to really be ambassador for the core values. It means that they are going to be making their team members work better and they're also going to be work, work making sure you work better. Next step then is to do the job interview with the different candidate, candidates. And if you haven't done a lot of job interviews, then I really recommend you to do a lot of those to, so that you get the hang of it and you are able to assess people quickly from many different perspectives. So this means two different key areas, as mentioned, the culture fit is really, really important. And then, of course, secondly, the technical functional competencies. So this means that can they actually do the job? Do they have the experience and competence to get the job done? So in the inter interview, you learn more, more about uh, background and see patterns of behavior and you also see what kind of person they are and does see or he really feel like a person that you really want to be working with two years to come, hopefully. Next step is to check for the reference of the candidates and this is a step that is very commonly uh, skipped and I think uh, I've also been guilty of that uh, a few occasions but I definitely do not recommend to skip it. Do not skip checking for reference because it's important that you uh, get input about the previous employers of the candidate. For which kind of, uh, I mean, what do the former bosses have to say about the candidate? Best way to evaluate future output is look at the track record, look at the history. How has uh, the output been uh, previously? That's uh, That gives you really good input on how the future output is going to be. In practice, you do this by... Uh, just calling the previous employers and you ask the numbers from the candidate and then you can just call the, these numbers on Skype using a Skype uh, balance. Then whatever the boss says, then you just cross uh, check that with what the actual candidate said. Does it match or not? The person you want to hire needs to have the right mindset so this means learning and growth is driven and really high performing has the values that you are looking for and also an honest communication and you should also consider is the person creative innovative and willing to embrace change because let's face it things on things change on this business model really quickly because amateur changes all the time the world changes all the time so a person needs to be able to adapt uh, to change really quickly. Gone are the days when people had the same job in same company all their life until retirement. Most likely Chinese people are going to be costing more than uh, Filipinos. So be prepared that the salary expectation can be considerably higher than just a seasoned virtual assistant assistance in the Philippines and uh, 
Philippines, uh, it's pretty similar culture to Chinese in the sense that they are both Asian, but of course there's a big difference when you if when you are only looking at Asian cultures. But when you are comparing Asian and uh, I'm sorry Chinese and Philippines uh, to, uh, to European, for example Finnish, then I mean in that perspective it's pretty similar. Don't worry about making any kind of mistakes in uh, hiring because in the online world it's really easy to hire and fire people. And uh, you're, you should hire everyone in a trial basis, meaning that you make also to the candidates, I mean to the hire people, really clear that you are on a trial and after a certain period, after a few months, we are going to reassess you and then we are going to decide whether you are going to be continuing or not. So that's pretty much it. Now uh, go on to hire your logistics person so that you're not going to be spending all your time just organizing uh, shipments and just restocking and so on. Uh, one thing that uh, this person could also be doing in the future is uh, I mean sourcing for new products. But as I'm, as mentioned, I mean that's not such a cr critical thing for maintenance because one thing that you always need to delegate first is the maintenance thing so that you can focus on the creative work and actually giving ideas and growth. You are responsible for the expansion and growth. If you are not focused on growth, then nobody else is either.